Hi, this is Miss Litton, and I want to do a quick review of cellular respiration. We'll start out with aerobic respiration. Keep in mind the main point of aerobic respiration is to take glucose and using oxygen break this glucose down in order to generate a bunch of ATP. And this happens through several steps. The main point is you have to be able to take the electrons and the hydrogens that accompany them from the glucose molecule and you're going to give those to NAD and FAD who will hang on to them temporarily and transfer them to the electron transport chain that is located in the mitochondria and drop off those electrons. When those electrons pass through the, through the electron transport chain, a hydrogen ion gradient will be established. Remember, this will be a difference in charge, a difference in concentration, and a difference in pH. So when the hydrogen ions move back across um, the cristae of the mitochondria, you will be able to generate quite a bit of ATP. So breaking it down into its steps, um, we have glycolysis, which is going to occur in the cytoplasm. This is really 10 different steps that requires 10 different enzymes and your end product from glycolysis is called pyruvic acid. And when you do glycolysis, you're starting with gluco glucose, C6H12O6, and basically that is a six carbon molecule, whereas pyruvic acid is a three carbon molecule, so you will have two of them. Two times three is six, we have not lost any carbons. Following glycolysis, which occurs in the cytoplasm, we'll do transition prep, and this is going to occur in the rest of the steps in the mitochondria. Both of these pyruvic acids will become um, acetyl-CoA, and this is a two-carbon compound, and you will have two of them. So if you look, if we're just doing the carbon math, we had two three carbons, and we had two, now we have two two carbons. So we will lose um, a, uh, two CO2s in that process. This carbon dioxide is what you're exhaling out when you um, breathe. You'll take both of those acetyl-CoA's and you're gonna feed them into this Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle or citric acid cycle is going to occur two times and in the process of that, um, you will directly form um, two ATP and then each um, as a result of two turns, one a turn, and then this is where you're going to generate, as a result of two turns of it, four carbon dioxides. So we've got four here, two here, that's a total of six. That tells us where we are here. Now, the electron transport chain is going to use um, high energy electrons. Where are those coming from? Well, in the process of doing glycolysis, you will generate two reduced NADs. When you do transition prep, you will generate two more reduced NADs. When you do the Krebs cycle, you are going to make three reduced NADs a turn, so that will be a total of six, and you will make two FAD reduced. All of these reduced NADs and FADs are brought, bringing their electrons to the top of the ETC. As those electrons are passed along, then you're going to form a hydrogen ion gradient on one side. So when those hydrogen ions want to come back in, that gives us the power to make ATP. So breaking it down, one more time here for you, glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm, 10 total steps, and then your end, pro your end product pyruvic acid is going to come in and you're going to do transition prep with that. And let me see. And let me go back. So sorry. You're going to do transition prep with that. Um, and the process of glycolysis, you'll make two ATP and two reduced NAD, but you'll end up with two pyruvic acids. Um, those pyruvic acids are going to be converted into two acetyl CoA. And those two acetyl CoA in the process will make two more reduced NAD, and here come those CO2s. Those two acetyl CoA's are going to get fed through the Krebs cycle right here. And we can see the Krebs citric acid cycle will generate two ATP for us, two reduced NADs, and two FADs. 
and also each turn, okay, so this is one turn you're gonna do this, so if you do this twice, you will have four CO2s, and you will have four NADs and two FADs. Then you will take the reduced NADs and FADs um, to the top of your ETC. You will drop off those high energy electrons as they work their way down the chain, a hydrogen ion gradient is generated. When those hydrogen ions move back through, that is how you will synthesize ATP. Moving on to anaerobic respiration, you are still trying to oxidize glucose in order to generate ATP, but you're doing it without the help of oxygen. Where did we need oxygen? Moving back here, at the bottom of our electron transport chain, which is a mess on here, I'm so sorry, you have right here oxygen, who is the final electron acceptor forming water. If you don't have the oxygen here, you can't do an electron transport chain. If you can't do the electron transport chain, you cannot do the Krebs citric acid cycle, you can't do transition or prep, so you are left with just this step right here without oxygen. So what you have to do instead is you have to do fermentation because you need oxygen to, you, to generate the most ATP. So you'll take your end product, still 10 steps, 10 enzymes for glycolysis, making two NAD and two ATP. You'll take your pyruvic acids and you'll either convert it to alcohol, which is a C2 molecule, or a lactic acid, which is a C3 molecule. Um, um, either way, you will oxidize your NAD so you have something to reuse here again in glycolysis. Um, ultimately not as efficient because it only generates two ATP, whereas if you could do aerobic respiration, you could generate somewhere between 36 to 38 ATP depending on efficiency. All right, I hope that was helpful.